Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, and in today's video, I have a pretty long-awaited guide for you guys. A lot of people have been asking me, ever since I started using this No Line Beyond a few months ago, how it is I got pretty decent with it, and how it is that I actually use it all the time, and pretty much how it's just become my main primary weapon. So, in today's video, I decided I'm just going to give you guys about my top 5 tips when using No Land Beyond to help you guys out. So before we get into the guide, guys, here's what I'm running on my two weapons. Now, I decided to run No Land Beyond and Shoddy. You can pretty much choose to use whatever you want, whether it's a sidearm, a fusion. really doesn't matter. It's up to your preference, whatever you want to use as your secondary weapon. I choose to use a shotgun, as with Twilight Garrison and Bubble, it's pretty necessary. The bubble without a shotgun is kind of hard to use, so I like to use the shotgun. That way, when I pop my bubble, I have something to defend myself with. That way, I don't just waste it and people try to rush in. Now I also make sure that my armor pieces have the increased reload for the sniper rifles as I never do the No Land Beyond Reload glitch. Now for those of you who want to know what the No Land Beyond Reload glitch is, it's basically when you shoot your gun and then you reload and then you, instead of waiting for the entire animation to finish, you actually sprint really quickly. That way you're, it kind of tricks the game into reloading your gun a little bit faster, allowing you to shoot your gun sooner than you would if you actually waited for the entire animation to finish. Now that's really complicated and it doesn't work 100% of the time. Which is why I just decided to run the gauntlets which increase sniper rifle reload time. That way it's always the same amount of time I know in between each shot. I'm never going to fail. And there's been times where I've messed up the reload glitch and lost rounds because I thought my gun was ready when it wasn't. So instead of messing with all of that and bothering and trying to get all the timings done with that, I just throw on the gauntlet. That way you never have to risk it and you always know exactly when your gun is going to be ready. Now for this next tip guys, this is actually extremely important when using No Land Beyond and it's actually the very same reason why everyone likes to call this gun the No Flinch Beyond. Now with many other snipers in this game ever since the recent patches, anytime that you get shot and you're aiming down your sight, your gun's gonna stagger like crazy and your aim is gonna get thrown all over the place. Now the whole reason why everyone uses No Land Beyond and the whole reason why it's called No Flinch Beyond is really because it doesn't have any flinch. No matter how hard your gun might look like it's flinching, it never actually is flinching. So that actually brings us into our second tip and this is probably one of the most important when using No Land Beyond if you really want to use it competitively. As nowadays everyone is likes to really run those high impact weapons like Clever Dragon and it really is hard to use any other sniper in this game nowadays if you haven't gotten used to that flinch nerf. That's why the No Land Beyond is actually one of the easiest snipers to use now ever since these recent updates as it has no flinch. You don't really have to worry too much and once you get this one simple tactic down I'm sure using this gun will become a lot easier for you guys. So there are actually two different ways where you can make your No Land Beyond sh shots hit even when your gun is flinching super hard. Now the first method is actually kind of hard because you have to time your shots and make sure that you pull the trigger in between the other player's shots which is what you see me do right there. That's kind of more difficult to do and you take kind of depends on the player whether or not you really want to do that. It's really only effective when you're playing up against a hand cannon as you can kind of see and hear when the next shot's going to be coming so you can kind of time it. But if you're going up against something like Clever Dragon, you're not really going to be able to time your shots in between like the spray of a Clever Dragon. So the second tip is where you're actually going to want to use that. If you're going up against like something like a Pulse Rifle, maybe even like a Mita, this is where the second method is actually going to come into play. So when you find your Nolan Beyond starting to get staggered, your first instinct is probably going to be to start moving your aim around to try to get the kill even though you're getting staggered. But the best way in order to actually hit your Nolan Beyond shots, even when your gun is pointed up at the ceiling, is to actually make sure that you don't move your analog stick at all. You actually want to just keep it completely centered with the person's head, and that way, even if it's flinched, when you pull the trigger, the bullet's still going to go perfectly straight. So no matter what your gun might look like, it's showing when you're actually about to pull the trigger. You just want to keep aim down your sight. Don't aim out whatsoever. You want to make sure that you don't reset your aim. Also, you want to keep out and look for this very, very subtle red dot that you will see come up if you are ever aimed at someone's head. There's actually a very small red dot that will show up anytime that you're aimed at someone's head with this weapon. And if you pull the trigger with that red dot itself, it's pretty much a 100% guarantee you're going to hit that headshot. There's been times where the red dot has shown up and my gun has literally been pointed at the ceiling and it literally just magically connected. So you, if you see that red dot and you pull the trigger, you really just want to trust that red dot. It's kind of crazy. I didn't even realize it for months and months of me using this weapon and there's just that really tiny red dot. And anytime you see that dot, you're golden. You're golden like the ticket. Alright, so now that you know how to shoot your no land, the really only thing left for me to try to give you guys some tips on is your movement. So with using no land beyond, it's really important and crucial to stay in really small and narrow hallways. That's really where you're going to get the most effect out of your no land beyond. The further away you are from somebody, and just the tighter the hallway is, honestly, the, the more you're going to have a easier time using no land beyond. So what you kind of want to do is try to make sure that if you're in a trials of the game, you want to pretty much play your own game. No matter what the other team is doing, you got to just stay in the territory where you know your no land's going to do well. 
don't just go bum rushing into the spawn every single round if your shot's not that great. You want to really make sure that you utilize your hallways, otherwise you might just fail like me. So you really, really just want to make sure that you play your gun, make sure you stay in the longer hallway. And if you ever do get close up on somebody, and this is something that I still mess up to on this day, you'll probably even see me mess up like next weekend because it's just so much of a bad habit. Anytime that you're going for someone's revive or anytime that someone's close to you, just pull out your shotgun. I, I, I'm the worst person to be telling you this, but I, I've seen myself lose way too many times because I've just been way too confident with my no land trying to hard scope a revive or trying to revive my teammate and I've just got my no land out. So if you're ever going for a res or you're ever just not in a no land situation anymore, just make sure your shotgun's out. It's going to help you out a lot in the long run. It just makes the gun a lot easier to use. So really, the most crucial part is the movement, the aim, and really what you need to do when you're getting staggered so that you keep hitting your shots. So hopefully you guys did learn something today in this video. Hopefully it helps you guys use the No Land Beyond a little bit better. I know this was a long-awaited guide, so be sure to drop a like down below if you did enjoy it and learn something today. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you tomorrow in a brand new Trials Legend video. Hopefully you guys enjoy that as well, and I'll see you there. Peace.